Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we are going to talk about combining kettlebell training with barbell training. This discussion is going to take us outside of the realm of just kettlebell training. I've been talking about just kettlebell training or heavy club training or mace training for about two years, because if you're not able to train in a gym, those are your absolute best available options economically, time-wise, and results-wise. Now that the world is kind of more open and we have access to going back to gyms, we can start to combine these two ideas together. Let's talk about it in the phases. Step one, warm-up. Step two, Turkish get-up. Step three, endurance section, which could be one of two things. And step four, pretty. Normally, we've been leaving out the pretty part of training and focusing only on the functional part of training. Being a well-rounded functional athlete is an extraordinarily good idea. The way that we tend to do that is we focus on a warm-up. Our warm-up needs to be useful to what we are doing. The way that I like to do it is by doing a joint mobility program. You can either do that specific to your workout or in a general fashion. One of the general warm-ups that I like to do is our 12-minute joint mobility warm-up that we put out through Strong and Fit. That is a six day program. We shot that pretty quickly. It's a simple idea. It's categories of movement focusing on the necks, the shoulders and the hips and the spine, 12 minutes each day, six days a week. So that's the one that I am going to do today. And other variation you could do if you have the equipment is to do a time under tension warm up with either a mace or a light club. Mace and light club because the goal with our warm up is to do 60 seconds of each movement time under tension. That usually puts people down in the range of say 40 to 50% of their heavy club weight. If it was for a single arm, it would be your sets of five to 10 in your volume cycles and density cycles. If it's related to our two hand mill squat program, then you're gonna to wanna to be at least 40% of that, maybe even lower. And the warm up would focus on inside circles, outside circles, shield cast, and then you get to pick three other things. Could be outside pendulums, inside pendulums, alternating pendulums, mills, or mill breakdown activities. Then we get to the Turkish get up. This day is entirely focused on a classic idea in gym training, which is push. So Turkish get up is the kettlebell total body equivalent of bench for barbell. Our Turkish getup programming is usually done as time under tension. If you have no time to do anything else, then you would do the warm up in the Turkish getup section. This is what most people will do if you have a workman's job or you work a long time every day or you spend a lot of time traveling. You'll focus on the Turkish getup as the primary important thing. Let's focus on it as a time under tension, anywhere from three to 10 minutes, depending on your numbers. We have several videos on how this should work out. Usually things start at three minutes, add 30 seconds until you get to 10 minutes, and then probably go up in weight and repeat. If you don't have access to going up in weight, then you would add more time under tension, and usually people can build up to about 20 minutes. But usually after 10 minutes, the benefit is to go up in weight and to start the idea over again. And our Turkish get up is our total body integrated strength because there's about eight positions in it. So we consider that to be the most important thing and the thing most likely to kill you. If you're really tired and you're trying to do something like this, then there is the possible danger of you dropping it on your head. I've never seen anybody actually drop a Turkish get up weight on their head, but we do like to focus on this first as a primary, most technical part. After that, we would run into endurance training. For me, that means time under tension, long cycle training, where 60 seconds or 90 seconds of a move on one side and then progress. I like to do this by adding complexity every time. So clean, clean and press, clean step back lunge, clean step back lunge press right there that's four movements we're already at eight minutes i like to focus on 20 minutes at least usually people say that there's a zone between 14 and 18 minutes where your body starts to upshift usually in the first 14 minutes it's very hard and then your body should upshift slightly in efficiency 
for the last couple of minutes. So we're trying to get to a minimum of 20 minutes of this, but push this towards the 30 minute mark. If you are not doing the long cycle training because you don't have the ability or the structural training yet to do that, then this would be our nerd math clean and press program. And this block of training about 20 minutes would be whatever your numbers are for your clean and press program. Warm up, get everything moving, Turkish get up, focus on integrated get ups off the body in a pushing manner, get the shoulders moving, get the spine moving, get everything moving, get into our endurance training, adding our numbers, but now we're doing it standing up, standing up being the most important thing that humans do after that walking, after that carrying load, after that running. And then the section that you don't normally get to do a lot of unless you have gym equipment is the pretty part of training. The least important part Normally people focus on this first and all of this stuff second. We like to try and make sure that that's not the case. We wanna focus on the most important parts first in order and then the pretty part later. So that if you run out of time, you're losing the pretty part, not the part that's gonna make you move better for the rest of your life. Our pretty training, if we're focusing on push and we have access to a barbell, will be floor bench. We've talked about floor bench before on this channel. I like floor bench because it's very hard to accidentally kill yourself if you're training alone. And I am training alone as I do basically every day. Floor bench means I'm gonna set up, no bench. I'm gonna use a rack in the gym. I'm gonna move my barbell down until I can get it off with my back flat on the ground. Floor bench allows us to solve a couple of problems. It allows us to do our bench with a wider grip which is key to sexy training or pretty training, and your elbows cannot go down below the line of the floor and you press all the way up. People say that that's a problem. It's not if it's combined with something like an inclined dumbbell press. I don't really see the point of doing bench on a bench, but that is just me. Everybody else in the world loves it. But if you have shoulder injuries or if you've had back injuries, Getting yourself on the floor is an extremely good idea. It's much harder to mess up. You drive your heels into the ground, you bridge your body up. Now you're doing a decline bench. You cannot drop your elbows down below the line of your shoulder. So you're not going to open up the joint in the front of your body. 60% of the gym going male population has an injury right here. And it is from benching on a bench. So we're gonna bench on the floor. I like to make this a 30 minute section of training. But some people will make this a 60 minute section of training if they have a lot of time. But that would mean that this whole workout suddenly takes two hours. I like the 30 minute, I like three minute rounds so that you can do a floor bench, immediately transition to some type of incline bench with dumbbells. And then I like to throw in one other thing to kill time, usually something like a pullover sit up on an ab mat. So this section down here, the pretty training, has two different angles. So think we're warming up the chest and the shoulder joint. This is the most functional thing. Now we're turning this into pure overhead press for endurance, but because it's an endurance activity, it's light and you're focusing on pure efficiency. Pretty training, we're actually trying to stress the muscle groups that people recognize as making us look good. Floor bench press, that's essentially a decline barbell press done in the safest way possible. If you're training alone, even if you lose it because of the height of the plates, you can't drop it on your neck and kill yourself. So you can push as hard as you want and be safe with this position. Unless you're really, really thick in the body, it's very hard to crush your chest or anything with the floor press just for safety, for shoulder safety, for life safety, for the lack of spotting. Incline dumbbell press, very hard to accidentally kill yourself with incline dumbbell press. The incline portion of the idea changes the angle away from anything anywhere else. Turkish get up, pure function. Overhead press, natural press. Floor press, arguable. This is incorporated somewhere here in our Turkish get up. This is just a wide grip and you can able to max out push weight. Incline, safe. If you mess up with dumbbells, they don't drop on your throat and kill you or anything. You can drop them to the ground to the side. I usually like to stick in the range of one to eight reps with the floor bench press, just because that's not mimicked with any other numbers on the board. These are sets of one. 
these are sets of usually 13 to 18, depending on which timing protocol you're going with. So I like to put this at start with eight, and then as you go up from one to 10 rounds, you just add plates every time, and you get to the point where you're doing about two reps near the end. And then usually for the last set, you pull all of it off and you go for as long as possible on the last set and you actually try to burn it out. That's part of the secret of pretty training is that you do all the work and you stack up a bunch of volume and then on the final set, you push towards exhaustion. And this is a safe way to do it. Our incline bench, usually this is the variable, the floor press, this one gets heavier. The incline bench, I tend to keep it one weight 40, 50, or 60, whatever you have available. And this angle is not mimicked in any other type of kettlebell training, unless there's a weird breakdown exercise that you're doing for Turkish getup. But this gives you a bunch of different angles on your push. And then we have that pullover sit up in there to kill time. The floor bench plus the incline bench is gonna take you a little bit over a minute to do, depending on how fast you transition and then you're gonna fill a minute with pullover sit-ups, and then you should have one minute to go find more plates for your bench press and stay on cycle. We're trying to always continue to make our training predictable with outcome, from the most important to the least important, and then down here at the bottom, we would have a cool down section of stretching. So warm up, joint mobility, our strong and fit programs, an easy way to do that. Uh, just do the 12 minutes and warm it up. That will get all the primary joints of your body functioning. Your shoulders, your spine, and the hips are the most important thing for everything here. Then our Turkish get up, getting up off the ground under load, absolutely essential to make sure we're maintaining a minimum level of human function. And then endurance, our time under tension protocol. I do the long cycle protocol right now because that is a good way to do it. And then here at the end, we're creating maximum tension and exhausting the muscles that we have used everywhere else. If you are in a normal gym, not a CrossFit box like I am in, this can change and this could become hammer strength machines of three different types chased in a row for a superset, or you could do a hammer strength machine and then a dumbbell press. There are a lot of things that we're looking for with this section of training, and this section of training is dependent upon the gym that you're in, but that's kind of the general idea. But this is not a short idea. This you should be doing every day. Turkish getup should be being done twice a week. Our endurance training should be done minimum twice a week, or our clean and press training, focusing on your pure strength basics of integrating your core standing up. And then the pretty training, the thing that we throw in at the end because we can now. This is not the necessary part. These are the necessary parts, but if you wanna throw this in, we can talk about this until we're blue in the face because there are a million ways to do this dependent on the environment that you are in.